debug with with say 16 processes. Okay, and and the uh, extreme example is if you can run it with one process or one thread, uh, you, you can do that, right? So example here is okay. So if you know OpenMP, right? If you know if you have uh, you know uh, kind of a, you know uh, indeterminate determinism. Okay, the, the result changes every time, something like that. Okay, uh, it could be a, a race condition. A race condition, right? Or it could be, uh, you know, uh, the variable scope problem. It, you know, the the a dip, a, in, uh, improper uh, usage of, of share or private variable. Okay. So one one way to to to, to tell which, which case it is is to run your OpenMP program with one single thread. Okay. Then you know, if it's a race condition with one thread, it wouldn't happen, right? But if it's, if it is a variable scope error, then you know even with one thread, you will still get get the error, right? So something like this, and uh, then you know you add slowly add add you know add more instances to run the program to review other issues. Okay, so uh, if if you really have to to do it. It's a large scale, okay? Uh, so do these things. So first of all, well, again, I mean, don't scale if possible, but if, if it is impossible, okay? So reduce the number of processes you, that your debugger is attached to, the, the, the debugger has to control, okay? So you can have a program running with 1,000 cores, but only your debugger attached to maybe just a few of them. Okay, that's possible, and we'll, we'll see how to do that with, with total view. Okay, uh, later on. Uh, so this is reduce the overhead. Okay, of course, right? I mean, if, if you just control a few against the control, you know, hundreds or thousands. Uh, and actually, well, this is this is uh, probably not a problem with DDT, uh, which you know, uh, I, I guess uh, it's kind of cheaper than total view, but also reduce the number of licenses you, you need. Okay, I know that the, the few clusters we have, the most, uh, in Queen B has 256 licenses for total view, and that, uh, and Crankin has 64 or something. Uh, so, each process you're, you're, you attach the debugger with takes one licensee. Okay, so you, you can run a program with a thousand core, but, but if you only attach, say, 10, pro, uh, attach the debugger to 10 processes, it will only use 10 licenses, okay? <clears throat> and uh, so reduce the number of processes you attach your debugger to, and if possible, you know, just focus on just one process maybe. So, you know, what it would, what it would want to do is analyze the, the call path of, of, of your program, okay? And see if there's any outliers. Now, suppose you know these 1,000 processes doing the same thing with only one process, you know, go to another route. Okay, then that probably the process you need to focus on. Okay, so <clears throat> you know you, you can control uh, the execution of, of, of as few processes as possible while keep others running. So this is what you do. So you know you have multiple. Uh, a lot of process of running, but only control one of them, keep others running, then, you know, this part, when you step through the execution of this one process, you know, others will interact with this process, okay, to review the problem. All right, so we'll, we'll see how to do this uh, with total, total view. <clears throat> and uh, so there's a lot of thing research efforts uh, Toward you know, get toward you know, come up with, with, up with uh, better tools. So these are what you know, uh, what I'm aware of. Uh, what's going on in the community? Okay, so uh, lightweight trace analysis tool. So basically, we're looking at two ends of a balance. Okay, so at one end you have things like total view, a versatile debugger, numerous features, but you know, what what comes with it is you know overhead. 
right? So basically, it's not that efficient. And then, you know, if you want everything, then the, the volume, the data you have to collect and stuff, uh, you know, increase with that. Uh, on the other hand, you know, if you have a huge parallel application to debug, so you can have something that is that is good for only one thing, maybe, okay, with, but with extremely low overhead, okay? So you probably can run it with thousands of, you know, hundreds of thousands of cores, and it just do one thing. It probably just give you the the call path of all the processes, okay? And you can analyze that and try to find out what the problem could be, and then you know use that information and and you know attach your full feature debugger to only that process, process you know, and 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 and, and right. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, like I said here, it's complementary to the full feature debuggers. So it's like, you know, the two end of, of, of a balance. Um, also, there's, uh, so this is, re this replay or reverse execution uh, targets the problem of indeterminism with parallel programs. Okay, so if, like, like I said, if, is it very possible to have a parallel a program crashes only once out of ten or out of a hundred runs. Okay, you know, in, if that's the case, you need to run your, your your program many many times just to get that one case where it crashes. Okay, so with this replace or reverse execution, it allows you to the, you only need to catch it once. Okay, it allows you to. So every debugger uh, has you know, controls execution. You can let it go forward, let it step forward, you know, that kind of thing. So the reverse execution allow you to go back in time. Okay. So if the problem occurs with this run and you capture it, okay, you can keep the session alive and try to, you know, you can go back to in you know, a certain point in your program and and replay the execution, find out what the problem is, okay? And uh, the last bullet here, uh, post-mortem st statistical analysis. Okay, so this is also targets, you know, the, the problem where you, you, you cannot catch the run where, uh, you know, it, it crashes. Well, probably, you know, a hundred other cases don't, okay? So some people say, why don't we, you know, for every run, let it dump some information. Okay, about uh, you know the, the the execution of the program. Okay, and once you have one run that crashes or a few of them. Okay, so you collect maybe so you run the, your, your your program 100 times and three of the three of them uh, fails. Okay, or pro the problem occurs, and then you compare those profiles, and compare those data, and see if there's anything different. For between the, the 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 good runs and the bad runs, okay. So I I, I don't know if there's any uh, tools available uh, for this. I, I guess it, uh, it's just you know some some research uh, software out there. But uh, it's kind of like you know it's something that people are trying to to do to solve the problem of of debugging a parallel program. Uh, Okay, so with these, um, I guess we'll start the uh, you know the demo of Total View. So before that, if there's any questions about general stuff? Okay. Okay. You see a layer question. Okay. I'm just curious about uh, the reverse engine you you mentioned. Uh huh. Do you do you know any of them implement in the theory debugger? Like. Oh uh, yes, uh, actually, Total View has it, and I think DDT has it as well. I mean, uh, so basically, it's just through checkpointing, I guess. So just record, uh, you know, kind of like like record the execution uh, of the program, and uh, then you can reverse back uh, to you know wherever you want, and actually. Uh, I think we will show uh, 
the the replay engine of Total View. Uh, we you know we, we don't have a, a license for it, but I just got the demo license uh, today actually uh, earlier this this day earlier today this morning. So uh, uh, hopefully we can see it applies to parallel execution as well as serial execution. So uh, we'll see how it works. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if there's no more questions, we'll s see what uh, Total View is capable of doing. Okay, so uh, excuse me, Total View, it's a uh, versatile, powerful debugger. Uh, it supports you know uh, C, C plus plus footprint, and also uh, assembler. But uh, I, don't, I don't know if any any of us uh, you know debugging assembler. Uh, anyway, uh, it, it's, it, it's supported on. Uh, I think almost all the HPC platforms, and uh, it has both school, uh, the graphic interface as well. Uh, has both the graphic and, and command command line interface uh, features. Uh, for it has all the common features, and also uh, it, it could uh, it has a memory debugging feature, and uh, we'll, we'll see uh, the reverse debugging or replay engine. It has. Uh, and batch mode debugging, so uh, it, it, it supports. So uh, for for batch mode debugging, it's it's like uh, a powerful level, uh, uh, I mean, powerful version of, of printf. Uh, it's, it's, it's useful when say you have some some program you run as a cron job. Okay, so it runs every five minutes or something, and uh, for every time it runs, you want it to print out something. Uh, as uh, environment, you know, check something like that. So uh, this is the kind of like the un unintended uh, debugging. Okay. So just, just you know, it can collect information uh, out of each execution of a program. Uh, remote debugging client is like you know, you can have this is like you have your SSH agent and uh, you know SSH client and have a profile for a lot of clusters. So you can you have uh, total view provides users with this uh, remote debugging client okay so you can have your so basically can run this client on your, on your laptop and have profiles for multiple well, you know cluster you have access to uh, and you know of course that's total view installed there and you know it can just debug on your uh, uh, laptop uh, so we we probably uh, don't have time to to go into details for all of them so what, what we're going to do here is just to show the common, you know, debugging functions, and probably a little bit about uh, memory debugging and and uh, the replay and the reverse debugging. Okay, uh, so let's, uh, let's okay. So there are a few ways of of start starting a uh, debugging session with debugging session with Total View. Okay, so you can start your executable with Total View. Or if your 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 code crashes and with a crashes with a core dump, you can start with a core dump, or you can start Total View and then attach it to a running process. Okay, uh, so I guess here we'll just start it. Uh, so that I'm logged into Queen B. I have an interactive job session run running there. So I'll just start it. I'll just start Total View with. Okay, so as a demo version, this is because I am using the demo license I got this morning. Uh, you know, the the Queen B has Total View 8.80 installed uh, with 256 uh, license seats, but just the, the uh, Ripley engine is separately licensed and is not included in, in there. So I to show the Ripley engine, I have to use this demo license. Uh, okay, so. Whenever we start, whenever we start a program, uh, it asks you if you want to enable Ripley Engine and if you enable memory debugging. Okay, so uh, for now, so just uh, enable the Ripley Engine, or maybe both. Okay, so 